Okay, what we want to do in this brief lecture is find the uh, proportion of our complete portfolio that we are going to invest in the risky asset. The idea here is, in, in, a, in a couple lectures, we'll actually construct the risky portfolio. But right now, we just assume that we have sort of an optimal risky portfolio. So all we need to do is decide, okay, how much of our, uh, our wealth, how much uh, goes into the uh, risky portfolio, and how much do we keep in the risk-free asset. So now, Y is going to be denote the, the proportion of our portfolio in the risky, uh, uh, the proportion of our complete portfolio in the uh, risky, risky asset or risky portfolio. So uh, we can write the return on our complete portfolio is equal to uh, the proportion that we put in the risky asset, and I'll say I'll, um, the, ris the risky asset is, 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 is a portfolio. Um, so I'll use risky asset or risky portfolio interchangeably. Uh, so we put um, uh, uh, this proportion, this fraction, 60% or, or so forth, in um, the risky asset. Oh, and I realize um, I want to say I don't want to jump to expected returns yet. So the return on a complete portfolio is going to be whatever the return on a risky portfolio is times the proportion of our portfolio in it. Uh, plus 1 minus y. So this is whatever part of our portfolio is not um, in the risky portfolio. So the idea is if we have 60% of our portfolio in the risky portfolio, then we have 40% in the risk-free asset. So 1 minus y in the risk-free asset. And we, we can actually have, uh, we'll note uh, briefly later, we could have 110% uh, um, uh, you know, uh, in the, the risky asset, and then we'd have to borrow. And then, it, it, then the question is, do, do we uh, borrow at the risk-free rate? So, uh, but for now, uh, this is the return on our, our complete portfolio. So, looking at uh, from this, we can get the expected return on our complete portfolio and um, the standard deviation of our complete portfolio. So, the expected return on our complete portfolio. So, the expected return on the complete portfolio. Now, the idea is uh, the risk-free uh, we treat as a constant. So, uh, that's just a, a constant number, um, four percent. So, um, we're left with just y times the expected return on the risky asset plus this, uh, and, um, well, I'll, I'll do it. So this is uh, equal to y, expected return of the risky asset, plus 1 minus y, risk-free. And we can rearrange this, um, multiplying through here, we can rearrange this to be plus uh, y, expected return in the risky asset, minus the risk-free. And writing it this way is useful because what we earn on our complete portfolio is just the risk-free asset plus um, how much do we have in the risky in the risky asset. And this is our risk premium here. So in other words, um, this is our reward for bearing that risk. So you know, this is we earn the risk-free rate plus whatever fraction of our uh, portfolio is in the risky asset times the reward for, for bearing that risk. Uh, of course, like in the last lecture, we can assume this is uh, positive, meaning we're risk-averse investors. Uh, the standard deviation of this is, is simple. Again, if this is a constant, then it, then it um, uh, doesn't. Uh, it, we can, it drops out of the variance and standard deviation calculation. It doesn't uh, affect the variance. So uh, we have the uh, variance of the complete portfolio is just y squared. Uh, the variance of the risky portfolio. Of course, this implies. Um, that the standard deviation of the complete portfolio is uh, just um, uh, the standard deviation of the risky portfolio times the amount of, that we have in the risky portfolio. Good. So what we usually want to do at this point is uh, sort of visualize this. Uh, and, and what we can do uh, is put this into the expected return standard deviation plane. A lot of, most of the time in portfolio theory we're dealing with uh, the plane here uh, with standard deviation on the on this axis and we have expected return up here. So the way to do so is just to note that this implies uh, y is equal to the standard deviation of the complete portfolio, the standard deviation of the risky portfolio, and then we can plug that in here for y. So the idea here is um, that, uh, and I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna erase this up here and rewrite it up here. So this implies um, the, expected, the expected return on the complete portfolio is equal to uh, the risk-free rate plus, um, 
and I want to write it like this. Uh, standard deviation of the complete portfolio times the expected return on the risky portfolio minus risk free divided by the standard deviation of the risky portfolio. So the idea here is um, what we've done is, is I, I, I've, I've moved the standard deviation of the risky portfolio under here to show that this is the sharp ratio. So this is our sharp ratio, the reward for bearing risk. So in other words, uh, what we can do if we plot this, if you have all of your, if you have 100% of your portfolio in the risk-free asset, um, then you ha your portfolio has no risk. So in other words, the y-intercept here, uh, or the intercept on, the, on, on this axis is the risk-free rate. And then, um, uh, this is going to be our complete portfolio, and this is our slope. So the idea is the slope of this line is going to be our reward uh, to variability uh, ratio, our sharp ratio up here. Um, so this is, you know, I'll note here the slope. A slope here is um, expected return on the risky portfolio minus risk-free divided by standard deviation of the risky portfolio. Uh, and this, uh, um, if we have 100% of our uh, of our portfolio in the risky, uh, then uh, this, you know, at this point we would have y is equal to one. This would be standard deviation risky portfolio, expected return risky portfolio at this point. Uh, this line, uh, this representation, this is the representation of our, our, our opportunity set. So given this risky portfolio and given this risk-free asset, we can invest anywhere on this line. So this line is called the capital allocation line. We can, um, we can, we can, we can invest, in, you know, it's capital allocation, it's our, it's our portfolio opportunity set. So. Um, this line is the CAL, Portfolio Opportunity Set. We can, by varying the Y, by varying the proportion that we have in our uh, risky asset, we can invest anywhere on this line. Uh, and this is where usually it's noted that generally, yes, we can invest um, out past this line. We can invest uh, where, where Y is 150%. Is uh, and then usually people draw it with a little kink like this, meaning... Um, uh, here, you you know, in this area, you know, if I decide to invest here, then I'm um, investing some of the risk-free asset, some of the risky portfolio, and I can definitely invest in the risk-free asset. Uh, however, past this line, I'm not investing in the risk-free asset, I'm borrowing. And generally, you can't borrow at, um, uh, you will borrow at a rate higher than the risk-free asset. Therefore, um, if the risk-free here is, is higher, uh, then the uh, slope will get get smaller, right? So this is where the slope sort of flattens out. Not an important point, it's just a, uh, a point that, that we can make. So now that we've written um, the, we, we, we've got a graphical representation of our, our, of our opportunity set, the question is where on this line do we invest? Uh, and simply, uh, we invest on this line at the point where we maximize utility. Uh, so uh, we can um, now, once I say maximize, it sounds like uh, a little bit of calculus. And absolutely, we can do some simple calculus and find um, the point that we invest on that line. So the idea here is uh, remembering our utility. Utility, our utility function is equal to the expected return minus one half a sigma squared. So this is the expected return on a portfolio minus one half. Um, uh, a is our degree of risk aversion, and the, this is the, the variance of the portfolio. So we can plug in our, the expected return on a complete portfolio, and we can plug in um, the variance, the standard deviation of our complete portfolio. So plugging that in here, we have the expected return is a risk-free plus y. Um, expected return on the risky portfolio minus the risk-free minus one half, one half A, uh, and then our, our variance is just going to be Y, standard deviation, the risky portfolio, squared. Of course, this is Y squared times uh, the variance of the risky portfolio. So uh, this, is, this is our, uh, our utility, and what we'd like to do um, is, of course, maximize utility. So we want to uh, maximize um, our utility by uh, with respect to uh, y. So in other words, we want to find the point um, y where our utility is maximized. One thing it's always important or useful at this point to stop and say, okay, well, um, 
you know, I'm going to try to maximize. This doesn't have a maximum. And what you know, what you can note here is uh, this is quadratic. So this utility function is quadratic, and in the squared term, it's, it's negative. So the squared term is negative. So in other words, I can tell right off the bat that um, uh, y utility it's going to it's going to have a function shaped like this. So in other words, utility is going to be a function shaped like this. This is quadratic, and the negative makes it. Um, inverted here. So we will have a maximum. So it makes sense to try to maximize this. So to maximize it, all we have to do um, is take the uh, derivative of the utility with respect to y, and then we set this derivative equal to zero, meaning, you know, um, I assume you've all had a little bit of calculus, but we want to find this point. At this point, the slope is zero, right? So utility y. Um, we're going to take the derivative, which will give us the slope, and find the point where the derivative is uh, equal to zero. I don't know if you can see that if I've just you know, drawn that and stood in front of it. Uh, so uh, what do we have here? This term is going to drop out. Uh, we have y here, so the derivative is going to be expected return on the risky portfolio minus risk free. Uh, then we have, this is again, it's going to be y squared uh, and then the variance of the risky portfolio. So this is going to be minus a the square of the y is going to come down, so this will be 2 over 2, and so it's 1 drops away. Uh, a, uh, y, sigma squared, risky portfolio. So that should be right. Good. So, like I said, we want to set this equal to 0 and solve it for y here. So in other words, set this equal to 0 and solve for y, and rearranging this, we should get y star is equal to the expected return on the risky portfolio minus risk-free divided by a, a sigma squared r. So this should be the proportion that we invest in the risky portfolio. We take the expected return on the risky portfolio, the standard deviation, the, the variance of the risky portfolio, plug that in here, and it's going to give us some y. Um, 83%, then we, you know, it's, if it gives us 83%, we put 83% in the risky portfolio and we put the, uh, the remainder, the 17% uh, in the um, risk-free asset. So, however, before we're, we're done with this though, what we want to do and what I always do when I'm up here and, you know, and writing these equations and so forth, is I want to make sure that this makes sense, uh, that we derive this correctly. So whenever you get an equation like this, the proportion that we invest in the risk, uh, risky asset, ask yourself, does this equation make sense? Uh, so, uh, if it makes sense, uh, you know, the way we can tell if it makes sense is what happens holding everything else constant if the expected return on the risky asset goes up? Well, if the expected return on the risky asset goes up, the numerator gets larger, uh, the denominator stays the same, so we invest more in the risky asset. That makes sense. More return, we invest more in the risky asset. Um, Alternatively, what if uh, the risky asset, the expected return on the risky asset stays the same, but it has more risk? The variance or the standard deviation of returns increases. Um, then, uh, numerator stays the same, denominator increases, and we decrease the amount that we invest uh, in the risky asset. Again, that makes sense. Um, uh, third, uh, the, degree of, de the degree of risk aversion. If everything else, holding everything else constant, if the degree of risk aversion increases, we should logically uh, invest uh, more in the risk-free asset and less in the risky portfolio. Uh, and as you'll see, that's what, exactly what happens. Um, good. In the risk-free, you know, I can put this in terms of if the risk-free asset goes up. Um, uh, in the, you know, so in other words, if the risk-free, this is a positive number, if the risk-free asset increases, then uh, definitely we'll put more in the risk-free asset and, 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 and less of our portfolio in the, in, in the risky asset. That's exactly what you see. So in other words, and, um, this equation makes sense to me, so, you know, um, and definitely always do that. When you see an equation, um, if it doesn't make economic sense, then you've done something wrong in the derivation. Good. So now we have the proportion that we invest in the complete portfolio, uh, the, the proportion that we, um, of the risky asset in our complete portfolio. And I'll put up some lecture notes where you can uh, practice calculating this. It will give you some expected returns and, 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 and allow you to uh, practice um, calculating um, these, these proportions. Good.